This cafeteria is a disaster in design. It really is. Like, why are those spaces here blocked? Why are those blocked? Okay, so... Oh, what's up with you? You know, the blank isn't that bad here. Yeah, people say our blank tastes like ca cardboard, but I like it. Do I just need to talk to everybody? You know, whatever. I I did talk to everybody in the night. I'm so hungry, I give up. <laughs> I have talking to you, and now I can move. I have talking to you, right? I have talking to you, I have talking to you, I have talking to you. Oh man. Which clue do I miss? You're not helping. Various drawings. One of them depicts a girl with blonde hair and a girl with black hair together. Uh. Picture for Hannah. She's my friend. Kitty and I have been friends since freshman year. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? When are cakes that's on the table? I've seen this cake somewhere before. For some reason I... What the... The hell? Oh! Suddenly, a door in my mind opens. One that I wasn't even sure existed until now. And memories come pouring through. Fragments of a past that never happened, but did at the same time. You're always so nice to people, Kyle. No wonder you have so many friends. Maybe we could sit together for lunch one day. I usually make my own, so I can try to bring some extra to share. The girl from biology class, Neela. Ah, oh, nothing special. Butter, cream, parmesan cheese. It's called pasta primavera. It's very rich and filling, even without any meat in it. Can try some? Say ah. Oh. She was so kind and caring. Whenever she smiled, I could never help but smile as well. Truth be told, I was hoping someone would ask me out to prom. And I kind of wanted it to be you. I always liked how honest and friendly you were. Those qualities are often so hard to find, you know. She was like the embodiment of the happiness I thought I'd lost. So I had to ask her to prom. When she said yes, I thought I'd finally grasped a glimmer of hope that things were going to be alright from then on. And that's when the nightmare began. Mm. I, I remember now. I was there. I saw everything. I watched Neela die, and there was nothing I could do to save her. Oh God, Neela. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. No, not now. I can't lose it here. Not if I want to stop what happened to Neela from happening to Brooke. Okay, so... But if there were two of them, what happened to the other one? We have to... Uh, we have to... Um... Go upstairs, I think. We have to go to the art room. I don't remember which it was. It was upstairs, I believe. God, I was running around here for ages! 
I didn't see the cake at first. I went into the room, but... What? But then I, um... Then I saw the paper down laying on the ground. Laying on the ground there. And that was actually the thing that made me go back into the room. And then when I wanted to leave, I actually saw the cake. I didn't realize at first. Teddy bear. A red teddy bear rests on the ground. This bear, it seems familiar. Once again, the memories come rushing back to me. Studying for chums. Besides, I'm on a scholarship. I'm already guaranteed a free ride to stay, so why bother? The only thing I need to study is my slam dunk technique. Hey, speaking of, I could use a second player for some practice. You interested, Kyle? Her name was Maggie. She was on a basketball team. For what it's worth, Mason, I had a good time. Maybe we can do this again before I head off the state, huh? But don't think I won't give you hell if you forget. I better see you back here soon or else. She was strong. She was feisty. But most importantly, she was fun. You know, you really are something. I'm so used to being the ass-kicking queen. But all it takes is a cute boy and a teddy bear to turn me into a sorry pile of mush. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't, like, pining over you or anything. It's just... I had fun hanging out with you, you know, and I wanted to get to know you better, that's all. When I gave her the bear, I thought an, I thought steam was gonna blow out of her ears. It was endearing, actually. And when she agreed to go to prom with me, I was hoping to get to see the side of her more often. But I never got the chance. Maggie. She was killed too. It's all starting to make sense now. All this time we've been forced to relive the days leading up to prom over and over again. And then on prom night, another girl dies. The very same girl I asked to be my date. God, have I really been leading them to their deaths all along? If only I'd never. Snap out of it, Kyle. This time it doesn't have to end like that. I can change things. I've got to tell Brooke what I know. It may be the only way to save her now. Was it there all the time? Or just watch me? <laughs> Ta-da! It's done, I call it. A promise, not a threat. What do you think, Kyle? Okay, so... No. Now isn't the time to start a scene. She's wrong. They're all wrong. I will save Brooke, no matter what. Okay, so while I was in the shower, I was thinking, maybe I've approached it the wrong way. So, Serena died, okay? So, for some reason, she's she's mad at Kyle because broken heart, etc., etc. But I thought the girls might have to do something with her because they went to that road trip. Um, but I think I approached it wrong because I think Serena just doesn't want Kyle to be happy. She she just wants to see him suffer with uh, by by making him lose what he loves. I guess this is more the case than them being related to the accident Serena had. Well, I think somehow maybe. Huh? Feels like I forgot to do something. Mm, I save. No, I have done. I've honestly, I've done everything. No, no, I, I did not forget anything. I am done. So yeah, 
this is my guess, that she just doesn't want him to be happy anymore. And whenever he falls in love, she will just take it from him. I guess. I don't know. The clock rolls over to 4.30. By now, the heat of the mid-afternoon sun has become all too familiar to me. Not so long ago, or rather, right now, but in different timelines, I waited on this very same bench, hoping to be able to turn my luck with love around. But now, that's the last thing in my mind. None of my personal issues can even begin to compare with what's going on here. People are dying. People I knew and cared about. How could things have gone so wrong? Why did everything go so wrong? I just... I don't understand it. Brooke, where are you? Please let her be okay. Wait, I see her. Thank goodness. Maybe now if I tell her what I remember. Brooke! My hoe! Brooke. Good, you're right. I was counting on her leaving you alone, but... Well, you were right. I'm just glad you're you're okay. Oh, you didn't have to worry about that. I found a perfectly safe place to hide while I did my research. Huh? Where? A cathedral. Ah, <laughs> Granted, I hadn't stepped foot inside since Easter, but when dealing with demons, it's a fairly safe bet, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I guess so. Good call, Brooke. Did you learn anything there that could help? I did. But I'll get to that part later. For now, though, I need you to tell me anything you've managed to figure out while I was away. I'm especially concerned about the missing students and what happened to them. I'm sorry, Brooke. There. I see. So they were killed, after all. Given what we know about the demon at play here, I can't say I'm surprised. But I was still hoping that wouldn't be the case. There's more to it. I... I was there when they died. I watched it all happen, but I only just now remembered it. If only I'd figured it out sooner. Carl, you can't blame yourself for this. Your memories of events were scrambled thanks to the time loop. There's no way you could have stopped it. Right now, we have no choice but to use what we know to keep history from repeating itself. That's why I need you to tell me everything you know. Leave out no details. Even the smallest one could help us immensely. The details aren't going to be very pleasant. I know. And I apologize for making you relive what happened. But it must be done if we're going to survive this. You've been so calm throughout all of this, Brooke. I don't know how you do it, but... Thank you, anyway. It's helping me keep my cool, too. No need to thank me. I may seem calm, but... Truth be told, I'm a little bit terrified, just like you must be. I'm just... Doing what I have to do in order to get through this, you know? I'll start from the beginning. What happened was... Okay, so this is the deal. The son of a bitch told me to find some girls. Disgusting. That girl is insane. She has to be. Neela and Maggie. I'd forgotten them, too, until you mentioned their names. Maggie was our MVP, and Neela was in the class below us. What possible reason could Claire have to kill them? I can't say. All I know is that she had it in for them personally. And call it a hunch, but I think it may have something to do with prom. See, I was thinking something along those lines as well. The looping of the days leading up to prom. The murders occurring on prom night. The victims, all prom days of yours. It's not uncommon for serial killers to incorporate something personal into their crimes. Clearly, prom means something significant to her. Although, what exactly the significance is, I couldn't say. It's not easy to decipher the inner workings of a madwoman. Or a woman at all. Brooke. We need to get you as far away from here as possible on prom night, so where Claire can find you. We'll tell our parents we're going together so they won't worry. Then we can catch a bus and... No, Kyle. Running won't do us any good. Huh? What are you saying? Neil and Maggie are dead because I took them to prom. I'm not going to make the same mistake with you. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. Just because her M.O. involves prom night doesn't... 
I what what does mean what does MO mean? Um Motive? I don't know. It was prom night no, doesn't necessarily mean she won't de deviate from her plans if need be. That is to say, if she wants me dead that badly, she won't hesitate to come looking for us if we run. Not to mention, with the kind of power she possesses, it will probably be very easy for her to do so. Who knows what she's capable of? But Brooke... Kyle, I know you don't want to feel responsible for my death like you do with the others, but you have to consider the bigger picture here. If we run, we may never stop running, and we leave Claire free to continue killing others. You're a good person, Kyle. Your desire to protect people is a quality that perhaps I could use more of myself. So I know you want to end this violence here and now, not simply wait for it to stop on its own. Brooke, but how? I saw with my own eyes how just how powerful she is. How are we supposed to confront someone like that head on? I'm going to be honest, I can't say with certainty how we can best defeat her, but I do think I know of a way to ward off whatever demonic force she's allied with. If we can do that, we could weaken her power considerably. A crucifix. Did your priest give that to you? He did. I was actually surprised he believed me when I told him what was going on. But as it turns out, he's been involved in more than a few exorcisms. You could even call him expert in the subjects. So not only did he bless this crucifix for me personally, he also taught me some exorcismal prayers we could use to drive back the demon's power. And you really think that'll help us? If Claire is using the power of a biblical demon like we believe she is, then yes, I have every confidence this will help. I understand your fears, but we can do this, trust me. And no matter what happens, I'll be by your side, and I, and I know you'll do the same for me. Brooke, the last thing I want to do is lose you like I lost the others. But you're right. If we won, she'll still be free to kill. She'll still be free to hunt us down. I don't know if I have anything that I can fight off the supernatural, but I will protect you, no matter what. You really, you really are much more kind than I deserve. Thank you. Now then, it's probably a good idea to stay close as much as we can. So how about we walk home together? We can come up with a plan for Prown Night along the way. Yeah, sounds great. I feel better going with you knowing you're safe. Yes, so will I. Oh, and I didn't want to hook up with her. I still don't feel safe putting broken harm's way, but I know she's right about this. Maybe we don't know what we're doing. Maybe Claire really is too powerful for us to stop. But if we don't try, the smart night may never end. In the end, it all comes down to Prom Night. Right where everything started, we finish it. Together. Maybe then, when all is said and done, we can go back to our normal, happy lives. Maybe. Prom night! Once again! Here goes. It's Saturday night. Prom night. The night that everything has led up to. It was a night that was supposed to be filled with fun and good memories, with hope for the year ahead of us. But when Brooke and I finally arrive at school, all we find is the shadow of dread, unnoticed by the other kids, but they are all the same. Can we really stop things from ending the way Claire plans them to? I don't know for certain. What I do know is that this is our best chance to make it out of this nightmare in one piece. Here we are again. Fucking prom night. Fucking. Everything seems as it should be. But something tells me that's only what Claire wants us to think. You're right, Brooke. It's going to be the first thing from normal. Kyle, I hope you're not too angry with me for asking you to do this. You had every right to say no. What? I'm not angry at all. We may be doing exactly what Claire wants us to do, but... Do we really have another, any other option if we want to stop her for good? No good options, no. I want this to end as much as you do, even if it means putting our lives on the line. In fact, I'm grateful that I don't have to do this alone. If anything, I ought to be thanking you. 
Kyle, please don't thank me for this. You're looking out for me as much as I am for you. Right. That's why I brought this. A knife? I don't blame you for coming on, but unless you want to be expelled and arrested, I'd suggest not putting it out so conspicuously. I know, I know. I've got it hidden under my claws. No one will see it. I just wanted you to know that if, th if things got ugly, I'm prepared to do what I have to. I am not losing you to her like I lost the others, even if it means getting my own hands dirty in the process. Who fucking cares? I understand. Just don't do anything reckless, please. I mean, she's a demon, so she probably never existed in this world, so if you stab her, there's whatever. We should get going. If I remember right, the prom king and queen are going to be announced soon. That's when she'll show her true colors. We have to be ready for anything. Yes, we can't be too careful. Any mistake could cost us dearly. Yeah. Okay. What does this say? Your efforts are meaningless. We we'll even try to stop it. What do you... Don't let it get you, you Kyle. It's just another one of her intimidation tactics. If you begin doubting yourself now, she has the advantage. You cannot fall for her trap. Does this say anything? Out of the ordinary? Oh, do you? Oh, hey, Kyle. I see your date showed up at least, unlike mine, that good-for-nothing little. What? Me? Upset? No, what makes you think that? Good-for-nothing fucking bread, what is this? All right, here we go. Oh man, look at this party! I've, I've, and what party it is, man! I've never seen such a party before. Okay, hey Kyle. Yes, my my proms. I don't know. Do I need to walk some a special amount of steps? Do I need to talk to a certain amount of people to make a trigger? I don't know. Ah. We're not gonna answer the names of the prom king and prom king. Pr pr pom pom pom. It's about to start. Get ready, Brooke. Right. I'm ready. Please give a warm round of applause to your seat and host for the night. Fucking Claire. her. Yeah. It started out like this the this the other times too. If everything goes the same way, she should try to get us up onto a stage together. It's not a trap. Whatever you do, Brooke, don't. So you came after all, Kyle. I'm actually quite surprised given all you've remembered. Swoosh. Wait. Everyone is... Oh, I wouldn't worry about them. They aren't even your real classmates, you see. They are as much set pieces of this world as the stage I'm standing on. You little... Let's not waste any more time with pretenses, Kyle. You already know what's going to happen next. Our third act of this revenge tragedy will end on with one final bloody sacrifice. Dun dun dun... What is this? How did you? Ah yes, I suppose you two are overdue for an explanation. Finally, as you may have already guessed, this world is not the one you once knew. It may seem similar, but it is very much different. In this plane, the normal laws of time and space don't necessarily apply. In fact, the only law that abides by is that of the one who created it. But what are you saying? You mean all this time we've been in some alternate dimension? And that is one way to put it, yes. Though the details are a bit more complicated than that. God, that explains everything. The time loops, the strange things we've seen. A plane of existence running on its own rules of space and time. Just what kind of power could create such a thing? A power most can't even begin to comprehend. A power bestowed only upon those willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. By the great demon king, Moloch. Moloch. 
But you've already figured out that much, haven't you? So it really was the work of a demon after all. Claire, just what the hell are you trying to accomplish? Using black magic to trap us all in some twisted murder cycle. If this is your idea of revenge, then what did any of us do to deserve it? What did Neela Maggie have to why did Neela Maggie have to die? I believe you misunderstand, Kyle. The one seeking revenge. Nomina Patris, Sefili, Espiritus Sancti, yes. Brooke, Saint Michael the Archangel, illustrious leader of the heavenly army, defend us in the battle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the world of darkness and the spirit of wickedness in high places. Come to the rescue of mankind, whom God has made in his own image and likeness, and purchased from Satan's tyranny at so great a price. Uh... I see that you came prepared, Brooke. The prayer of St. Michael, nasty and a right responsible for casting away countless demonic forces. I must admit, you would have made for quite a formidable exorcist in any other context. Holy Church venerates you as her patron and guardian. The Lord has entrusted you the task of... What? Pity then that the rules don't work that way here. The crucifix. But it was blessed. How were we able to? Don't be silly. Only a fool would create a world where the power could be so easily threatened. As I've said, the laws of this world act in accordance with its creator's will, and its creator has declared holy magic to be null and void. In other words, your relics and prayers can save you now, mastermind. Ugh. Oh my. Yeah, much better. Now we can win properly. You son of a bitch! Fucking... Oh. Oh, Kyle. I just never learned, do you? I've already told you that you can't save her. You really should have taken my word for it before pulling a stunt like that. Screw you. Screw you! Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to finish us up in a timely manner. Oh, man. You. I knew you weren't just a transfer student. And the fact that you clearly have ties to a demon, king of hell no less, makes a question whether or not you're even human at all. An astute observation. I ought to have expected as much from you, Brooke O'Keefe. They say you're a leader, a genius, the most beautiful girl at St. Giles. But I think we both know just what you really are. I don't have time for your cryptic accusations. If you have something to say to me, then say it. Very well then, I'll cut to the chase. You, Brooke, are nothing short of a monster. And as with other vile, dangerous creatures, you must be exterminated. A monster? And what exactly did I do to deserve such a title? Oh, I don't believe I need to explain that to you. After all, you were the mastermind behind it all, weren't you? You've been crazier than I thought. I haven't done anything wrong. I admit, Brooke, you're quite a talented actress. Oh, shit, so they were responsible for the accident for that happened to Serena. Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> but it's time to take off the mask and expose you for who you really are. A villain of the highest caliber. A black-hearted devil who delights in breaking hearts and destroying dreams. So that's what it's all about. Damn it. If I had known it would end like this. You're far too intelligent for your own good, Brooke. Or you're plotting, you're scheming, you're double-crossing. Someone has to put a stop to it. I assume you already know this, but in the early days of mental health, there was a doctor who championed a radical new treatment. With a long, sharp instrument and a few taps of a hammer, 
you could sever the connection between the frontal lobe and the rest of the brain. This intended to cure the patient of their ailments and make them more docile. However, it was just as likely to maim or kill them instead. Once brilliant, a sickly minds were permanently damaged, leaving the poor souls as mere shells of their former selves. Surely you realize where I'm going with this. Oh god! Now then, shall we begin your treatment? With the precision of a trained surgeon, Claire carefully aims the ice pick at Brooke's eyeball. Uh, no. She holds the pick steady. She raises a small hammer high into the air. Finally, after what seems like an eternity, she brings it down. Ugh. Over and over again, she drives the pick deep into Brooke's head. All oh, while well, I can do nothing but watch hopelessly. And as I lie here, helpless, unable to even stand because of Claire's dark magic, I can't help but wonder, was she right all along? Was there really no way I could have changed things? The operation is complete. How do you feel, Brooke? Oh my, it looks like the treatment was a resounding success. All of the wit and intellect you used as a weapon is gone now. You'll never harm any another soul with your evil schemes again. I think we can both agree that you're much better off this way, yes? I would save my breath for something other than useless, please, Kyle. You know that's not going to stop us. Despite all of your valiant efforts to change the outcome, Brooke is going to die, here and now. No. Oh no. I'm going to be honest, we were originally going to simply leave you in this drooling, vegetative state. After all, if anyone deserves to linger in agony, it would be you. Sadly, such a punishment is simply not feasible at this point. You must die if you want to go forward in our plans. To think you actually believed that you would come out on top. But you were wrong. You've lost, Mastermind. Goodbye. Well, that makes three. The last of the three have finally met their end. The liar, the forger, and the mastermind have all paid for the crimes with their lies. Almighty King, may the blood of these sinners appease your hunger. May we continue to use your gracious gifts to enact our revenge. Can move again. <laughs> God, what do you want to do? You want to stab her? Too soon. I'll fucking kill you. Yeah. Well played. Well played. I apologize, Kyle, but killing me is going to be next to impossible. Although the form I've been granted appears to be made of the same flesh and blood as you, I can assure you it's anything but. What? You're... Kyle, you're really not the smartest one, huh? Consider yourself fortunate that I'm under strict orders not to kill you. 
Otherwise, you'd regret doing something so dreadfully rash even more. Orders. What do you mean, orders? You mean to tell me you're not the one behind all this? After everything you've done? Indeed, and that's exactly why you should never be so quick to make assumptions. Now then, while I may not be able to kill you, I have been given permission to make you suffer should you become defiant. Your suffering is her ultimate goal, after all. But if it isn't you, then who is it? Who the hell is she, anyway? That's enough, Claire. I'll handle this. Oh, damn. Here she comes. As you wish, mistress. Here she comes. Oh, she is... <gasps> no! No, is that... No. I have been waiting for this moment for quite a while, Kyle. The moment I could see the look on your face when you realized just how wrong you've been about everything. What? Wait, you're... Dolores? From English class? Huh, so you do remember me. Call me flattered. But... How? Dolores, don't tell me this was all... Guilty as charged. Every last inch of this world is my doing, my creation. Even Claire here is nothing more than a proxy of mine. All she can do is follow my orders. But she apparently did a great job convincing you otherwise. Oh god. Oh my god. Remember now, she was there. And there. And there. She was right there and I never even noticed. I did. Then... Then it means you killed them. Nila, Maggie, Brooke. You killed them all. Why, damn it? Why did you do it? What did any of them ever do? What? God. You really don't know anything, do you? Maybe if you had been a little more observant, none of this would have, ha have had to happen. What they did, Kyle, was destroy the one thing I had ever left to live for. My dream. And though you may not know it yet, you're just as guilty of killing it as they were. That doesn't make any sense. How could I have done anything to you? We barely even talked. Oh, don't worry. You'll find out soon enough. In fact, I'll show you what you've done in the most memorable way possible. Uh... Could it be? What the hell? What's going on? What are you doing? Setting the stage for the final act, of course. If you thought things you'd seen before were bad. Well, let's just say I was going easy on you those times. I haven't even shown you half of what I can do to you yet. My voice is just really... I am putting so much effort and talking loud enough. You want answers? I'll be happy to give you some, but it's not going to be easy. And it's definitely not going to be pleasant. Good luck, Kyle. You'll need it. Aha! Uh -huh. What the fuck the fuck is Dolores now? Why are you screaming again? So... Is Dolores... maybe... Huh. That was even easier than I thought it'd be. Moloch must have given me a nice return on my investment. Is she maybe like... Your work here is finished, Claire. Fall back for now. Yes, mistress. I don't know! From now on, he'll have to answer to me personally. And when I'm through with him... He'll have a whole new understanding of what it means to regret. <laughs> Regret what? <sighs> the mastermind. The ending on the mastermind. Huh. 
<laughs> so this, this is how it ends for me. All of my effort, all of my planning, and this is how it ends. I don't understand. Everything was perfect. Everything was going according to plan. But even I could never expect something like this to happen. Even so, I won't apologize for what I've done. I will never apologize. I did what I had to do in order to keep my dream alive. And if that makes me a monster, so be it. And as for Kyle, he was a fool. A means to an end. Perhaps if he'd been a little less gullible, he would have never gotten caught up in all of this. Clearly, I underestimated you. Dolores. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever had a dream left unfulfilled? A dream that constantly claws and eats away at your soul? A dying dream left to fast them, to rot within your breast until every fiber for you of your being is tainted with its poison? I had a dream like that once. A dream where I was loved, where I was wanted. Where, even for one night, someone would hold me close. I dream of happily ever after. Uh, when all of the pain and loneliness wouldn't matter anymore. Maybe he... Oh my god, I'm just making su su uh, uh, suggestions and things and that's not going to help. And that dream was you, Kyle. Come out, Breaker. Don't you want to see what the bloody corpse of a murdered dream looks like? Don't you want to know what those silver-tongued monsters did to me? Listen to my story, know why they had to suffer, and then come find me. Okie dokie, if you hurry up, this is really... I've been sitting on this for like six hours now, I don't know. Be sure to save the last dance for me, Kyle. <laughs> I will... Don't worry, babe. All right. So tell me, what, what, why, what made you go so psycho? What the hell? Where am I? Shit, my knife is gone. They must have taken the wind. Oh God, it's the school. Yay, it looks good. It's the main building, but what happened to it? Did she... Did Dolores do this? Yeah, I guess so, no? Claire was right. I... I had no chance against something like this. Neela, Maggie, Brooke, I let you all down. I couldn't do anything to stop her. And now... Looks like I've got no choice. She said she'd give me answers. If I want to know why this happened, I have to play along. And maybe, if I'm lucky, I'll find some way to stop her from hurting anyone else in the process. <sighs> but I'll need to be careful. She said it wouldn't be easy. And I've got a feeling it's going to get a lot more dangerous from here on out. Dolores, I don't care what your reasons were. I'm going to make you pay for what you've done. Oh, well, this is delightful. I have saved over this. See, five and a half, five and a half hours. Oh no, wait, wait. I want to just read this. Welcome to hell. Vindictum contra omnibus. Um. Okay, 